Hello, um, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to another Iron Hack webinar. Uh, if you haven't seen me around before, so my name is Katya and I am program manager at Iron Hack Paris campus. Uh, if you haven't heard of Iron Hack before, so we're a global tech school with boot camps in web development, data analytics, UX, UI design, and cybersecurity with campuses around the world um, in Europe and America. And if you're looking for a career change in any of these areas, please feel free to ask us anything. Uh, before we go to the session, some rules about Crowdcast. So the chat to your right uh, is for you to leave comments, feedback, to interact with each other. But if you want to ask questions, you can do so on ask a question section. And you can even upvote uh, each other's questions if you are also interested by the same one. Um, we'll have space for a live Q&A in the end. Also, this webinar is recorded if you need to review it in the end, and it will be accessible via the same link that you've used to, um, to get to it in the first place. And so enough from me. Uh, now I'd like to introduce you to El Diaz, our data analytics lead teacher in Paris, who will be leading this introduction to Web Scrapping Workshop with you. And El Diaz, I leave it over to you and um, enjoy, everybody. Hello, guys. Uh... So it's the first time of me doing uh, the webinar in this specific format when I don't see anyone, but it's still fine. So uh, I hope that everybody knows what is web scrapping. For those who don't know what is web scrapping, web scrapping is basically the process of collecting data from web. And uh, the idea is that we always need some data. We're always starving for data, for more data. Uh, when we are uh, doing any kind of data research, we always uh, uh, can find ourselves uh, looking for some very specific information that is uh, not available in our open source data or in uh, all the sources that we manage to collect. So uh, when I am uh, working on uh, uh, the simple data uh, data set uh, from uh, Kaggle, as we always do, uh, there is always uh, a way to enlarge and enrich this data set to make our uh, projects be more interesting, to make our models be much more, uh, to have for our models to have such, um, a bit higher predictive skills. And uh, uh, here comes the web scrapping. Uh, we can simply find some data online, right? Uh, sometimes uh, the data that we are looking for is uh, much easier to obtain online than actually from uh, uh, doing some analytic studies or from uh, doing the field uh, data collection. So what we do is uh, we search for some data sources online. At the same time, not every company provides uh, their data for free. Uh, some of them, they provide their data uh, for free uh, through some specific API channels, uh, but at the same time, uh, it may be um, not the easiest way to collect your data. <laughs> Why it can be? Uh, for instance, uh, uh, for one specific project, uh, you had to collect data from Spotify. Uh, it is pretty easy. Uh, they provide their uh, free API and uh, you can uh, simply get the token. Well, first you need to register yourself. You can get the token. And that's it. Using this token, you can access uh, a lot of massive amount of data. But uh, the issue is that uh, you need to learn how to actually use uh, their uh, API. You need to understand all the functionality. You need to understand uh, all the aspects of uh, all the instances on this API. The issue is that what are the odds that you will use it again? I don't think that they are quite high. Uh, well, it all depends, obviously, on the area of your work, but still. And uh, now imagine uh, we are working uh, in the game industry. In the game industry, uh, we want to understand uh, how many sales do our game has. And uh, in fact, it's not only about the sales, but also about the actual players and uh, the actual viewers. Uh, the important thing is that uh, uh, we always can access the information about the amount of uh, live players, right? We can take a look on the statistics. Uh, we have all the information, all the logs of our players. We can see how often every player logs in into the game. Uh, but uh, we don't really know what about the rest of the community. Like among all the people who have uh, not yet downloaded the game, who have not yet purchased the license or, well, the 
subscription for the game. Uh, we don't know uh, how many of them are actually there, how many of them are actually interested in playing the game. Maybe we need to uh, come up to some uh, very specific event when we will uh, sell uh, the game with a discount. I don't know. Uh, in order to understand this specific uh, uh, number, what we can do is we can uh, try to track uh, the popularity of the videos of the streamings uh, with this game. And uh, nowadays, we have uh, several channels that allow us to do so. Uh, firstly, uh, the simplest, the greatest, YouTube. Uh, YouTube allows us to get all the statistics about uh, every single video that uh, is related to any topic. Uh, but the issue is that uh, it is YouTube. <laughs> Not everybody is a huge fan of YouTube. And uh, YouTube is great for everything, but not it is not great for something very specific like gaming industry. But we have Twitch, and uh, Twitch is great for gaming industry specifically. For those who don't know what is Twitch, Twitch is uh, the video portal, uh, the video hosting portal that allows us to uh, host our videos there, specifically uh, about the games. And uh, there are a lot of different streamers that uh, uh, concentrate their videos all around a very specific game. And if we know how many viewers there are for every single video, we can see, we can estimate the popularity of this game in the, in the mass among all the players or potential players that are not yet subscribed to our game. And uh, that's the topic of today. We are going to collect uh, the information about the amount of views for one specific stream on Twitch. And in order to do so, I will uh, firstly open the Twitch. And uh, let me share my screen so everybody can see what's going on. <laughs> So here we are. I hope that everybody can see it. So this is twitch.tv and that's basically the uh, websites uh, I was talking about. Everybody should know about it, right? I will uh, log out so Twitch doesn't know who I am. I will uh, manage cookies and reject it all. I hope that everybody's doing so. Voila. So this is basically the platform where we can see a lot of different uh, channels. We can see a lot of different streams on different topics. Uh, for the uh, specificity of this specific uh, webinar, uh, I decided to go for music. So we are not uh, limiting ourselves to games. Let's go to music. Here we can find the music area. And uh, here we can see the, the current streams show all music streams for you and uh, here we are we can see the guy with 41 viewers at the moment who is uh, playing from 6 p.m until 7 30. well it's a uh, i guess this is a uh, recommendations for france so most of them are in french and uh well i i i'm not even sure which one should i select uh let's go for some something like this extra chart after party powered by Duncan. Oops, that was loud. Uh, so uh, let's take a look on this guy. So here, if I mute the guy, I start playing and I see that uh, the amount of viewers at the moment is constant. It is 393. We can see the time, how, well, how much time has it been since the guy actually started uh, the stream and uh, some description about it. At the same time, I don't see the number changing. Well, maybe a little bit, uh, which is not that interesting for us because it is uh, way more interesting to see the number that change. So let's take a look on another stream. So what about this guy with uh, 41 views? 41 views, 97. Hmm, that's a huge jump. Interesting. Probably that's all of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
No, number doesn't seem to be changing. If I refresh the page, it is still 97. No, it is 41. Interesting. It's really interesting. Okay, let's take a look on another one. Uh, well, go to the channel and uh, to the music. Let's go to the this one. Justin, Justin Griffin. So here we have uh, 296 uh, viewers at the moment. Uh, this specific streamer has 30k followers, so probably there will be more or less within the time. Anyways, let's take a look. Yeah, here we have 307, meaning that the number increases. So how do we get the information about this specific stream? How do we get this information into Python? Because, well, we are going to work with Python. Uh, in order to get this information, we need to uh, think how the website is actually communicating with the server, how this data is, uh, where this data is coming from. There are different ways to connect uh, the website with the server. And uh, Twitch uses uh, a very specific uh, connector, uh, which is a uh, uh, REST API-based connection. <laughs> uh, the idea is that uh, uh, the website is not actually, doesn't have any data inside. Uh, instead of uh, showing you the data, the website has a, a very small limited uh, basically empty uh, storage for with uh, a lot of different boxes inside. And uh, every box corresponds to a very specific number or a very specific value. Uh, this value is uh, obtained by actually communicating with uh, the server that contains this data. And uh, all the relationships are maintained using uh, JavaScript, but the data is itself is stored on the server. So what we can do, we can pretend that we are the website and that it is the website that is sending all the requests. In order to do so, we can uh, right click and uh, go to inspect element. Actually, I can stop playing the video, so it's not really missing the view. Uh, here, uh, in the right part, I have the developer mode. So here I can see what is exactly what. I can see that here I have the block that contains the follow, subscribe, and the rest. Uh, if I open it, I can see a lot of different uh, layers inside, deep inside, and it will keep on going, you know. Uh, I don't need that. Instead of uh, taking a look on the HTML code here, I prefer going into the network. And in the network, I prefer uh, collecting more data. So. I get rid of everything that I had before, I preserve log, I disable cache, and I refresh the page. When I refresh the page, all the containers that uh, used to uh, collect the information, that used to keep on sending different requests, uh, they were updated. And as you can see, uh, with the time when uh, the video is streaming, we are keep on sending and receiving more data. All of those blue blocks are basically the different amount of time and the different amount of data that we received. And all of this data most likely is related to the video itself. Uh, as you can see, it is the video, uh, videoviver.cdg02.hls, whatsoever. We are not really interested in this part because we are interested in the number, which is 367 at the moment. And in order to get there, what to do is uh, we are in the XHR block. We scroll to the very top. We take a look on the first file, which is GQL. When I take a look on it, I have, uh, well, when I click on it, I have another window opening here, which contains the headers, the preview, response, initiator, and timing. What I am interested in is headers and preview. Headers contains different blocks. The first one is general, which is the general information about uh, the request that we sent. Uh, as you can see, the request was sent to the HTTPS gql.twitch.tv slash gql, which is uh, the basically the server where the database is located. In this case, it is a GraphQL, uh, which is a very famous uh, database. 
as we can see, we send a POST request, which means that we send some information and we expect the server to respond and uh, to send some information back. We don't know what kind of information we are sending yet, but we can take a look on it later. Then we have the response headers, which is the headers of the response from the server. We can see what exactly the server is telling us. We can see what exactly we are sending uh, as a request headers. So what kind of information we are sending to the server to prove that we are human beings, that we are using the browser, and uh, that we are coming from uh, Twitch itself, that we are not using the Python. And uh, finally, we have this block, which is request payload, which is the additional information that we are actually sending with a post request. And uh, here I can see that there is pretty much nothing. I'm sending the prime, prime offer list, prime offers. So probably I'm sending some information about, like, can you please send me back the information about all the offers that Twitch has at the moment? I don't know. In the preview, I don't have any data, meaning that server decided not to reply. It happens. Next, we continue with the next GQL file. And here in the preview, we already see some data. Let's take a look what is inside. In data, we have a stream playback access token, which contains, well, the signature and the value, which is at block false, authorization forbidden false reason nothing. So basically this tells us, uh, tells the Twitch that I am currently not logged in. And at the same time, it tells that I don't have at block uh, turned on probably. Uh, but there is no data about the number of views. So what I do, I continue my treasure hunt. And here we are. The third file that we see here contains already much more data. Let's take a look. The element zero contains the information about the ID of something is denied under H, false. So probably it is the restriction of the video saying that this video is it denied for 18 plus? Oh, 18 minus? No, it is fine. Privacy low name GDPR should should show notification false, should show settings page true. I don't know what is exactly, but I don't think that is useful. So I continue to the second element. In the second element, I have the current user no, meaning that, well, I'm not logged in, but it shows that I am located in France. You may have something different, but uh, it's still pretty much the same. You, you may find uh, uh, another value or those blocks being in different order, or maybe it may be located in a different file. Still, it is pretty much the same. Uh, the second one contains also pretty much nothing. Uh, the third one contains the same information. So probably the first few blocks are all about me personally. And since I'm not logged in, I don't have any information that I'm sending to the server. Here I have a lot of different information, which are the information about recommended section. Sorry, that was enough. Recommended section. And uh, this is basically these guys. I can take a look. This guy is uh, MR Pierre Croc. Just chatting. That's it, Minecraft. Whatever. Uh, I can take a look here to see that, uh, in fact, this is the ones. This guy is uh, just chatting uh, with uh, Mr. Pierre Croc. Here we have uh, the second one is Teracit. The third one is Jurayel uh, Cochon. So we can see that this block is also not that interesting because it doesn't contain the information about the current viewers. So we continue to the fifth one. Uh, here we see already information about the channel. That is a Justin Griffin. Here we are. We have the ID of her, probably. The login, primary color of uh, her page, I guess. Uh, profile image. We can take a look on the image itself to see whether it is corresponds to the, her profile image. Here we see that it is. Yes. 
So we have the actual information, but I don't think that it is the information about the number of viewers, right? It is not 300 something. So we continue. Number six contains the information about uh, the stream. We see that the stream was created at this date. We see that this is the ID and we see that the type of this video is a stream. It's not a recorded video. So uh, we continue next. Number seven contains information about uh, the ID and uh, that's it, watch party. So since this one is not a watch party, it is quite useless. Number eight contain the information about uh, viewers count. And I guess that's it, right? When we just loaded the first time, loaded the page for the first time, we had something around 340 viewers. And uh, that's basically the data that we are looking for. So we found it finally, right? Now, how do we get it in, into Python? In order to get it into Python, what we do is uh, we send the same request as Twitch did. Remember, we have this request URL. We can send this, now uh, we can send exactly the same request to the same website. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna send the post request to this website, providing these headers and uh, specifying this data payload and uh, at the same time in, in order to limit the amount of output instead of uh, accessing the information about uh, every single uh, block here we can access the block number eight that contained information about use view count and as i can see here it is still number eight this is the guy so let's go to python where can we find the python in order to launch Python, what we do is uh, we say, uh, we basically search for Google Colab. Google Colab is a tool that allows us to uh, connect to Python uh, through servers of Google and uh, run Python code without installing anything to our computers. Obviously, if you have uh, Python or Jupyter Notebook or something else installed on your computer, you can run it directly there uh, while we, the rest of us, at least me, I will use Google Colab for the moment. Here I will create a new notebook. And here we are. At the same time, I guess uh, I am uh, the one who has a uh, black theme on the background. You may have the white theme. Uh, at the same time, you will need to log in using your Gmail account. So if you uh, don't have a Gmail account, that's quite sad. Uh, give me a second. Dun, 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 dun. So, uh, here I will zoom in so everybody can see everything. Uh, the first thing that I will do is uh, I will import all the libraries that I need in order to get an access to the server. So I say import requests as R. Request is a library that allows me to send requests, obviously. Uh, I will import under SPD so I can store my data in the data frame. Uh, I will import re regex so I can clean my output a bit. Uh, I will import from date time import date time so I can store the moment when I actually send the request. I will import uh, <laughs> should I need it or I'm not. Well anyways I will import uh, plotly dot graph object as uh, go. Uh, now it is connected and uh, here it crashed because there is no such a block. What? Graph objects, oh, sorry. I misspelled it a bit. Uh, here we are. First, it takes a few minutes to connect to the server of uh, Python and then uh, it is pretty fast. The second thing that we need to do is we need to define the relationship to the server. So. Uh, my URL that I am accessing is coming from Twitch. 
Okay, here and we are. Dave, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you zoom in your screen a little so people can see better? Oops, see, this is good. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, here is the link that uh, we are trying to access. Uh, as we can see, we are sending post request, and that's what we're going to do later. The second thing that we need to copy paste is uh, the headers. I will simply copy paste everything from here. I say that headers is a text that is defined with triple quotes. Paste it. And that's it for the moment. What I need to do in order to be sure that uh, my request works is uh, to convert uh, this text headers into a dictionary where the keys are everything to the left and the values are everything to the right. In order to implement it, what I do is uh, I simply say headers dot split with a semi uh, with a new line first that allows me to split the lines or different. Uh, key value pairs in my dictionary, future dictionary. Uh, then inside of it, I say for i in this, i dot split using the column and space. When I do that, I'm basically running a list comprehension that allows me to uh, iterate over the header split. Uh, with a new line and uh, on every iteration what i do is uh, i split the value of this guy into two different values which are accept and uh, the value when i run it as you can see i get a list of lists where every list inside of list of list is basically the different key value pairs where the key is the first part and the value is the second part I'm going to save it as a, I will convert it into the dictionary, basically by applying dictionary function. As you can see, it works pretty smoothly. And I save it as headers. And voila. The next thing that I do is I need to prepare the payload. And in order to do so, I go back to the page of uh, Twitch. I scroll down and I have this payload. From this payload, I only need the one that contains use view count. I need to view source in order to be able to extract it correctly. And uh, well, what I will do, I will copy everything. It will be easier. Given the text here, this will be easier. So uh, I will paste it here as it is. And uh, somehow it's, oh no, it's good. So if I uh, get into triple quotes now, and print it, I have my output. This is all the text that we had. At the same time, we know that uh, our text should contain the use view count. So what I can do is I can simply control F, use a view count. And here we are, we can see that it is the operation name. At the same time, we can see that every single uh, part of this text starts from operation name and finishes with another, with a triple uh, curly brackets. So what I can do is uh, basically I can uh, erase everything that is not related to uh, use view counts and uh, leave the part that is related to use view counts. And in order to make it simpler, I will separate, I will get rid of the text part and I will slightly modify my view. So this is about the variables. Then we have the extensions. It's here. And uh, here is the second operation name. So the first one is not related to use view count, so we can erase it. So this is number zero. And we have the second one, extensions, key, 
this is about advertisements, so we don't need that. Then we have the one related to operation name, also not that useful, in fact. And the top navigation current user can be removed. Prime Prime offers current user also quite useless. Here we are. Erase it. Personal sections. Since we were not logged in, it, it is pretty much sim uh, empty, so we don't really need it. Even though it contains a lot of text now, still, I can erase all of that. Then we have channel shell that uh, indicated the actually the information about the channel that can be removed. Use lever. I guess this is the information about the channel, not the one that I thought it is. Uh, and I guess active watch party. Almost there, guys. Almost there. Here we are. And the use view count. Finally, we got the correct one. And I can erase everything that goes right after. Here we are. So this is my uh, information that I need to send to my uh, server, to the server of the Twitch with my uh, request. In order to do so, I simply save it as a text, as a data. Finally, I have all the pieces of my puzzle being collected together. And what I need to do is uh, I need to say r or requests dot post. I'm sending requests to the URL. I'm passing the headers, which are the headers. Headers allow me to identificate myself or to tell Twitch that it is me who is uh, accessing their website uh, without in uh, indicating that I am doing it through Python. And uh, finally, uh, the data. When I run this line, I have a response to 100. And 200 means a good response. And uh, finally, what I can do is I can uh, get the JSON out of it, or the output of my query. As we can see, the output is a JSON file, or JavaScript object notation file, uh, that contains the data about this user that has this ID about this specific stream number. And here we have the number of viewers, which is exactly what we were looking for. And uh, if I rerun it again, I get the same number, right? 424, 424. And uh, if we keep on running this line again and again and again, that will mean that we are simply sending more and more and more different queries. And uh, with time, we will get the information about uh, uh, the amount of users at every sim and at pretty much every given moment of time uh, on this stream. We don't need to run it every second because sometimes, uh, even through time, the number of viewers don't change. So. As like just like here, we took like I don't know, twenty seconds already since I ran it for the first time, and uh, the number of viewers is still four hundred twenty-four. If we take a look on the server on the Twitch page right now, and update the page, I can close this part now. We can see that the number of viewers is four hundred twenty-four, and as we can see, it's not her streaming anymore. It's just some random song playing around. What do we need to do in order to change the channel at the moment? Let's go back. Let's go to another channel. I will go to music on Twitch. Mm, no. Browse. Here I go to the music. And uh, here I still have 424, 136. Let's go to 136. At least he's singing. And uh, I will take a look on this number now. As I see, I have DJ Must now. 
And this is the ID of uh, this specific player, or of this specific stream. Uh, in order to access this amount, what I need to do is uh, I need to change the Justin Griffin JMS everywhere. If I take a look on the URL, I see that the URL actually is independent from the channel itself. It doesn't matter what stream we are accessing, we're still uh, sending the post request to the same URL of the server. Uh, then when it comes to this part, I have changed uh, the DJ must. And uh, finally here, in uh, the information about data, I can see that I have channel login, Justin Griffin, I need to replace it by DJ must. And uh, that's basically it. There is nothing else that is different between these three different, uh, two different channels. So if I rerun this line, if I rerun this line, next one, and I send the request, I get the information now about another channel that has 136 views at the moment. If I take a look here, 144, that's interesting. What if I rerun? 46. So as you can see now, this channel has updates. This channel has fluctuations in his number of views. And uh, this becomes more interesting because obviously the more volatility, the easier it is to see that our code is working. And well, obviously the numbers are actually much more useful. So as we can see, the number keeps on changing from time to time. So what we can do is uh, we can collect it. In order to collect it in a nice way, we can, uh, well, we can send uh, all those requests in the while loop and uh, keep on collecting different amount of data points. So in order to make it work, I will uh, apply a function that I have collected so far, uh, prepared for this conversation uh, that contains uh, a little bit more information. So first of all, I have the function called get payload. This function allows me to get the payload or this part for every single channel, no matter what I am looking for. And apart from user uh, number, I also get the player tracking context query. Uh, you will see what it is a bit later. Video preview overlay and stream metadata. All of those were collected from the Twitch page from the network part. And uh, here, what I'm doing is uh, I have this specific uh, uh, payload that uh, uh, was sent to the Twitch server on for every single channel. And uh, here I am slightly cleaning it. So if uh, given these different attributes for my function, if uh, the user is looking for only get counts, or only in the number of people who are watching the stream at the moment, uh, I say get counts true, and for the rest I say false. But if uh, you're looking for uh, general information about the stream or the channel, you need to indicate get general info true. If you want to see the preview image of uh, the stream, you need to ask for get preview image true, and finally get stream information, like what time it has started. Uh, then I do some cleaning using regex, and uh, finally, we are. If we test the function, we can test it, get payload uh, for the, what was the guy's name? It was uh, DJ Must. And I say get counts true. As you can see, this is just a payload that I have prepared that I can send to the server. The second thing that I do is I have another function that's a called clean a bit, meaning that it basically cleans the response from the server. Uh, I receive the data that is basically this output. And this output is not user friendly, right? I don't like it actually, because this is just a JSON file and it's uh, very difficult to play around JSON files, especially when you want to study them with some statistics. So what you do is uh, uh, I simply collected the data for every response that I have. Given the fact that I may end up sending four different requests, I need to be sure that uh, each request is uh, cleaned in the proper way. So what I did is I cleaned all of them 
and ended up creating a beautiful data frame, well, series, with uh, the time when uh, the request was made as uh, the index. The next thing that I have is a final function, which is get data. Get data gets the data. Uh, it gets the data for a given username and given all the restrictions that you specified. Uh, whether you want to get the data uh, the, on the number of, of viewers at the moment, uh, the general information, the preview image, get stream information, and so on. I will uh, share this file uh, with you later. As you can see here, I am providing the URL. I'm providing the headers. Well, those are quite old ones, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I, pro I clean the headers. I make a response. Uh, I make a request using get payload. And uh, finally, I clean the response and I return it. So what I will receive in the end is uh, uh, get data for DJ must. And uh, here, get counts, true. Here we are, and uh, here there is an issue. I'm not sure why. Interesting. Let me take a look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, if I am right, it should be fine. Let me take a look. Uh, it, is it a DJ must? Yeah, it is a DJ must. And then, so here we see that uh, it crashes for the name uh, in the I extensions operation name because uh, string indices must be integers. So this is just a text. Interesting, maybe they have updated the output. So what I will do is I will update my headers. I will copy these guys and paste them down because these guys work, as we remember. Boom. And I will put this guy as a format the text. And now here I need the PyTZ, which is the library that allows me to convert the time into the correct time zone. So now when I rerun this line, it should... So as we can see, it returned as a data frame, well, a series that contains uh, the number of current viewers of uh, the stream and the time when the request was made. So when I rerun it, I get the same number of viewers, but I changed the time. Or in order to visually be able to see it, I run it in a different cell and I see that the number is the same, but the time, yeah, the time has changed by nine seconds, pretty much. So now how can I automate the rest? How can I collect all the strings, uh, all, this, all the data about the stream, with in time and at the same time uh, maybe visualize it somehow in order to do so i need to use uh, some visualization tool like uh, plotly and at the same time just make a list uh, a loop so i can say uh, <laughs> import time well, i will put it into the very top as well time is uh, required for me to be able to make my code pause a bit so i don't i'm not sending the request one after another non-stop because you know it's quite useless the data is not updated yet and uh, in order to uh, have the first bounce look i send a request for my dj must man saying get counts equal to true and uh, then I will uh, uh, da, 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 I will create a function plus one that allows me to create plot uh, using the data. 
uh, figure is equal to graphic object dot figure. Uh, figure widget. Uh, here I'm adding go dot uh, scatter, uh, indicating the x and y, where the x is a data dot index, while the y is a data dot current viewers. Uh, then. I also need to indicate that uh, uh, it is the line plot. So I say mode is equal to line. And uh, that's basically it. Uh, finally, what I do is I return the figure. So if I take a look, I can say figure is equal to create plot with data. And uh, when I visualize the figure, hmm, it's a Coca Cola. So when I visualize the figure with figure show, I see this. I see on the x axis, I have my date and time. On the y axis, I have the number of years. At the same time, potentially, I should have a number somewhere, which is here, in the right in the middle. As we can see, the, at uh, 1850, 26, on 19th of April, 2021, we had 135 viewers on this specific channel. At the same time, it's quite useless, right? So what we can do is uh, we can uh, keep on sending different requests. Honestly, the last function is a uh, def update. I will use the data and the figure. And uh, that will allow me to update my figure uh, on every iteration of the loop. So I say that my date is equal to create plot is data dot data. Uh, here I accessed the data from the plot itself. And uh, now I can uh, simply update it. Fig data 0x. is equal to date 0.x and the same with y. Uh, and finally, I can say while true, uh, df uh, is equal to get data uh, on our DJ must. Is a uh, get counts equal to true. Uh, then I say that data is a uh, data dot append df. So on every iteration of my while loop, I am getting data from the server and I am appending it to my data frame. I say time dot sleep three seconds. That allows me to wait for three seconds until I make a second request and update. Uh, the data and the figure. Print. So every time it will keep on printing done. When I run it, if I would have ran it on uh, Jupyter Notebook or on my local instance code, uh, it would update this plot. Uh, Unfortunately, Google Colab is uh, quite uh, sensitive to this question and it's not updating everything properly. But we will see the updated numbers uh, right after we stop the code from running. In order to stop the code from running, what we need to do is uh, we need to click on this button because as you can see at the moment, it doesn't have any breakpoints. So I stop it. Uh, here we see the keyboard interrupt quite fine. But now if I say figure the show, I see the plot that indicates that during the, all this time of three minutes, there was literally no updates between uh, the number of viewers. If I take a look on DJ Must, the guy is still here and uh, it has 133 views. Actually, there is less than now. 
interesting and uh, that's basically it from me I will uh, save it as a uh, scraping session I will share it with you in the chat anyone with a link can view copy and done oops how do I stop it from sharing I guess it should be somewhere here no I'm not sure. Ah, here we are. Sorry, guys. And uh, now I can send you the link. Do we have questions? I can see the request to zoom in. I'm sorry that I didn't read it late earlier. And uh, regarding the up notebook as you can see i have already signed it yeah don't worry that's what i'm here for uh, when you share the screen you can't see the questions so yeah. thank you very much everybody to for participating uh, we had quite a lot of you here tonight thank you so much ideas for uh, for teaching us this interesting workshop don't hesitate to follow iron hacks crowdcast for the any upcoming workshop and the next one in data we will have i believe will be a month from now uh where we'll be looking at the science behind netflix so we hope to see you there and have a good evening or day or morning, wherever, wherever you are, everyone. And um, see you next time. Ciao, ciao.